This content is for educational purposes only. What you do with this information is at your own risk. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to share with y'all that I have updated my CFW packs to work with the latest Switch firmware, which is right now 20.4.0. These packs consist of the latest version of Atmosphere 1.9.4. We're still using the same version of Hecate 6.3.1, but I did re-upload my pack of Hecate because it has files needed to work with Atmosphere 1.9.4. Now, just to let y'all know that there is no reason to update to 20.4.0. I usually make these videos to help those that accidentally updated and you can get back into CFW. Everything is working just fine for me, but there may be things that need to be updated by their devs in order to work with this uh, version of firmware 20.4.0. So it would be up to you if you wanted to update. There is really no reason at the moment, but you can update to uh, Atmosphere 1.9.4 at least if you wanted to, but just letting you know. But with that being said, let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to let y'all know that I will always have two options for y'all to update your CFW. Obviously, for those of you that might have accidentally updated, you will have to do the manual route in which that's what we're doing in this video today. We have these two zip files that we can download to update manually. The other side, AMS 1.9.4, the other side, Hecate 6.3.1. The other option I have is you can use my modified version of the AO Switch Updater app in which you can update your CFW through Wi-Fi on your Switch and get updated to Atmosphere 1.9.4. I've also added the firmware 20.4.0 in the case that you would like to update your firmware, you can go ahead and use that modified version as well. But if you're interested in my modified version of the AO Switch Updater app, I'll have a link in the description to that video so that way you can uh, follow along or at least get that link to download my uh, version of the AO Switch Updater. So just let you know. But for this video, we're going to focus on updating the SD card manually. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is have access to the SD card that we're going to be using on the Switch. And it doesn't matter if you have CFW already set up or if you're starting fresh, this video will still help you out with getting set up with CFW. But before we continue with that, it doesn't matter how you access your SD card as long as you're able to transfer your files successfully. Now, I highly recommend using the Hecate SD card tools. It is very reliable, never have any issues, and it's also very convenient because you don't have to take out your SD card from your switch. You can access the SD card through the PC via USB to the switch. And even though you might have updated to your uh, firmware that breaks CFW, if you have a more modern Hecate, you should still be able to boot into Hecate at the very least. And if you have the SD card tools option, you can still access the SD card and edit all your files while you're in Hecate and it doesn't uh, affect you when we're editing the SD card, which we're going to be doing later. So just let you know, I recommend it, but it's up to you on what you do next with the SD card. So now that we have the SD card open, we can now download these two zip files for today. So if you look in the description down below, there's going to be several links. And you're going to want to look for the two that say, click here to download the other side, AMS 1.9.4.zip, and the other side, Hecate 6.3.1. Both of these links will take you to my GitHub page, release page. And in the assets area of these pages, you can click on that link and start the download process. After that, you can have it moved to the desktop like I have done here. Now, before we extract these files on the SD card, I like to edit this part of the SD card. And I know a lot of people don't like doing this, but it minimizes a lot of issues. And what I mean by this is I like to delete the atmosphere folder and the bootloader folder. These are the most important folders that have the files when updating CFW. And a lot of people like to extract over and replace, but for some reason it works for some and it doesn't work for all. So just to keep it on the safe side, I like to delete these folders and uh, extract the new files from my packs. And if you've been using my packs from before, I always have the same setup. Everything is already set up for you just to plug and play and get back into CFW. So with that being said, before we delete anything from these folders, you may want to keep 
things that you have saved inside the atmosphere folder. Uh, for example, if you have uh, the contents folder, you may have extra folders here that uh, that you may use for like mods of your uh, games, maybe themes. Um, you're going to want to um, save those if they still work for the new firmware. So you can have them removed off the SD card, especially if you have themes, you're actually going to want to um, uninstall your theme first before updating. And I mean, I guess you can't do nothing if you accidentally update it, but just let you know that if you have anything that you care about inside this contents folder, you can remove it first. Then we do the updates and you can put it back right after we do uh, the extraction of the new files. And if it doesn't work for you, it's most likely because inside this contents folder, you have files that do not support the firmware that you have updated to. So just let you know, same thing goes for bootloader. If you have anything inside here that you may want to keep, then uh, that would be up to you. Like I said, my files come with these things already, so it's okay to delete them. And uh, in my case, so with that being said, let's go ahead and delete these two folders. And now that we have them deleted, we can go to these zip files and extract them to the SD card. Now, I always use 7-zip on my videos. I never have any issues with it. I do not like using WinRAR or WinZip. It just, for some reason, doesn't work for everybody. But with 7-zip, it is free. And if you want to follow along with me, you can um, click a link in the description as well to download 7-zip. What with 7-zip, I'm going to open the archive. And here we have the updated files for Atmosphere 1.9.4. And we're going to want to highlight all of the files inside this archive. And we're going to extract them into the root of the SD card. And that is the beginning of your SD card without being inside any uh, folders. So you want to extract it to the root and make sure you don't accidentally drop it inside a folder. So I like to put it somewhere here. And it's going to extract and it's going to say that you have files with the same names. You can go ahead and replace these files because the most important files are inside of the atmosphere folder. But now that we did this to atmosphere, we can go ahead and do the same thing to Hecate. Right click 7-zip, open the archive, highlight both of these uh, files and folders and extract them to the root of the SD card. And replace the file in the destination if you have that message. So. That's pretty much it. We are updated. And just to give you a quick insight, um, I did update the atmosphere with the reboot. Um, this, uh, this one, reboot payload. This one is updated with the Hecate. So for those of you that have the OG switches and maybe the V2s, you can use the reboot to payload and it will always go back into Hecate. For those of you that use um, the Mariko devices like OLED and Switch Lights, I did rename this payload.bin and this is the Hecate 6.3.1. And you can use this uh, on your SD card, which automatically extracts when you put it in there. And if your mod chip looks for it, it should find the payload.bin already there. That being said, those of you that use the Tegra RCM or the RCM loader, you can use this payload.bin to update your RCM loader or Tegra RCM GUI. So if you have any questions on that, you can leave a comment down below. But with that being said, that's pretty much it. Inside of the, Atmos the switch folder, I added the quick reboot and you can use this to reboot your Marika devices, the OLEDs and the light switches. And it should go back. It should reboot your switch just like reboot to payload. And if your mod chip looks for this payload.bin, then it should automatically boot back into Hecate for you. This time I did not add my Eradicane Love installer because it has been depreciated and DBI installer is the better option. So just not to confuse anybody, I did not add it. But that should be pretty much it. If everything goes well, we can eject back into Hecate. Okay, so here I just got out of the SD card tools. I know it's blurry, but just to give you some type of insight of what I'm doing here. Oops. I'm gonna click on close. And 
if you want to be extra safe, you can go to home and you're going to want to go to, I think it's reload. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and reload. And since you deleted the bootloader folder, you're going to have this message from the NYX again and just do your time and date. It's a one time thing. And then up here, it should say 6.3.1 if you weren't on it already. And also just to give you a quick insight, all you need to do next is go into your launch and you have all these launch options. The first one is OFW and this is where people go into a stock switch and go online with this option because it will not have any CFW. The second option is with the SysNand, like stock switch, but with CFW, no MMC, and it's using the fusey.bin to access Atmosphere. The third option is EMU MMC using fusey.bin as well. And the fourth option is um, the package three option with Hecate you know, using uh, on the SysNand. So it's like a stock switch on package three. And the last option is the same thing, package three with EMU MMC. And I know it's confusing with having all these options here, but I added all these options because for some reason, people that use fusey.bin it works for some, it doesn't work for others, and vice versa. For some reason, it works for people with package three and not fusey bin. I just add all of them, and uh, hopefully one of these options work for you. But of course, if it doesn't, you can leave a comment down below, and I'll try and help you out as best as I can. But if you have EMU MMC, you can choose one of the EMU MMC options. I think it's safe to use the fusey versions first. I do not have EMU MMC, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on this option here. Atmosphere SysNand. And if you have accidentally updated to 20.4.0 and successfully extracted the files to your SD card, you should boot into Atmosphere with no issues or crashing. So, okay, so if you're able to boot back into your switch without any issues, then we should be good to go. That means that my updated CFW pack of Atmosphere is working for now, but we can also check to see if we are actually updated and working just fine. If we go into system settings, go all the way down to system, and right under system update, you should see that you're on the current version 20.4.0 because you accidentally updated to that. But we are back with Atmosphere now with 1.9.4. And I have an S at the end because I'm using my CFW on SysNand. If you have an E, that's because you're using yours on EMU MMC. So that seems to be working just fine. Uh, another thing that I did not mention is that I add a host folder inside of Atmosphere and it blocks Nintendo servers and you should not be able to update accidentally anymore or have those messages when you're trying to access any one of your titles and have that message telling you do you want to update and you accidentally poke it you should not have those messages anymore if you're using my packs and the last thing to check to see if it's working is if you have any type of forwarders and the forwarders are working then you should be good to go or if you have any pre-installed titles and your your titles are working then you're also good to go but a good way to tell and at least to show y'all something that it's working for me is to show with a forwarder but there we go. Everything seems to be working just fine. And I hope everything works for you as well. Let me know if it doesn't work for you. And I can try and help you out as best as I can. Uh, let me know if it does work for you. Uh, this time I'm actually early, so I'm kind of surprised. I'm showing a lot of chest. And we'll see if they do a quick update right after I post these videos. But let me know if it works for you. Let me know if it doesn't. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.